I'm Cuboid, and this is episode four, I believe, of my Chromaticraft um, tutorial series. Um, so in this episode, I'm going to be continuing some more basic crafting. As you can see, I've covered um, some of these things. I still have more to go, as well as I still have, um, where is it? I have some basic tools and stuff like that. And some stuff here too. So I might have another like two or three episodes on basic crafting with the tools and stuff like that. Then I'll move on to more complex things. But let's just continue into the video. So this is the Chroma Collector. It is a very important block as you will need it to produce a certain liquid. And it is crafted in the um, normal casting table level one um, and it's four of any type of crystal shard I just put blue in there um, one glowstone one eye vendor and then three stone then you'd, you would take your elemental manipulator click on that and then well you'd have your chroma collector and the block itself is um, pretty cool it's got this black top that actually has a texture on it that's animated and it's also got these little um, particle effects around it that I'm pretty sure they don't mean anything. They're just kind of there, but yep. And so what you want to do with it is I just need to go in survival here, which requires me to get a bunch of bottles of own chanting. I know I could probably use a command to give myself XP. Actually, I've never tried giving myself XP hmm. um, you know what instead of just throwing a bunch of bottles of enchanting I think might do that so I'm gonna go figure out how to what command I need to do to give myself XP if it is possible okay I have figured out the command I don't it, it's pretty simple um, I don't know why I didn't know it before. I probably just forgot it, but yeah. So, um, the Chroma Collector, you can see it has um, with Wela, the wind. That sound is just the wind. Um, the Chroma Collector AI yeah, has an input and output tank, and so what you want to do is get yourself some XP. So. Like eight or so levels or just get yourself a bunch of XP and stand on top of the thing and you can see we now got a um, uh, a progression so that one is where is it here it is um, magic liquid so a collector but of what and from what um, experience can be converted to a mysterious magic fluid. Surely it will have uses. Yes, surely it will have uses. Um, but yeah, so you can see now inside the thing we have liquid chroma. Now I'm going to use a command to give myself a bunch of XP. Uh, 100 is only about five levels, so let's give myself a thousand. You can see it's going to start draining down, and as you wait, it gets. Um, it drains it out of you faster and you can see we have one bucket of liquid chroma and um, of course this can be automated with rotorcraft pipes I put the glass over top of it so when it rained it didn't fill up with water but you can see that tanks now filling up and you can see the liquid chroma kind of it cycles between uh, kind of like a bluish color and kind of a pinkish color um, but, yep, um, so you can see the tank has just, um, almost two buckets in it, but if you have a mod such as open blocks, you can drain your XP into the, um, thing. You know what, let's give myself, how much XP can I have? Why am I doing this on a chromatic craft tutorial? That's enough XP. But you can see, I, um, the e liquid XP is going into the input tank, so it accepts li um, s some sort of liquid XP. So any type of liquid XP will work 
um, it just needs to be pumped into the side of it and then it will output li liquid um, not liquid actually it will output liquid chroma out of the um, top e and or bottom um, so again inputs are the side outputs are the top and bottom and you can see it's filling up this reservoir right here this is kind of slow But yep, and I think that's enough explaining. So um, this is, one second. No, I don't. Bring me back to creative. So this is what the bucket of stuff looks like. It's liquid chroma. Um, it flows extremely fast. And you can see stepping in it gave us a, um, uh, a progression. So liquid effects, um, liquid chroma has already proven itself a solvent for items tossed in. What else might happen? Stepping in it yourself seems to do little, though you feel a bit rejuvenated, but its power to enrich materials is not insignificant. So it will be used to make what is called boosted shards later on, um, but you don't have the progression for that. I believe the boosted shard progression is this one. But it requires you to get this one, uh, and then that one requires this one, and this one requires that one, and this one requires this, and this requires that, and that requires all sorts of things, but I think you get it. So um, a little thing I should point out now is that I haven't shown these off in my Rotocraft tutorial yet, but you can craft these water wheels, water um, wheel things in um, ready craft and pouring water over them makes them spin faster I'm pouring liquid chroma on them will make them spin uh, faster than normal because it's flow so fast okay so that's the liquid chroma um, again stepping in it yourself gives you uh, night vision saturation and regeneration so a decent alternative to eating food is just by bringing a bucket of this around and stepping in it and Yep, so this is liquid chroma is also used for a couple other things such as enchanting, but enchantments will probably the are more of a um uh you need to get the elemental awareness thing and that's kind of a higher progression. It's kinda hard to get. Um but I am talking too much right now and I should move on to the next thing. So the next thing what is it? Um probably this. Uh, this is the crystal brewery. You can make potions out of the crystal shards. And it is crafted using... Uh, let me just check here. Yeah, okay. So it can be crafted using four of any type of crystal shard. Three stone and one cauldron. And that gives you a crystal brewery. Um, it doesn't look like much. Just kind of like some stone corner things. And yeah. It's a fairly not fancy block it doesn't really have any particle effects or anything it just is there when you when you open it you can see you got a spot for bottles so those are your water bottles and a spot to put your crystal shard so I should probably put I should have probably had a chest there with some water bottles in it but let's just grab like pick one uh, that one it is so you put your water bottle in it, you can put three in if you want, probably best to do three at once. You put your crystal shard in, and you can see it's going. Um, it takes a while, so just kind of let it go. And I'm going to tell you beforehand, it gives you potions based on the effect uh, the crystal, the cave crystals do on you, so have on you, so you can see. We have Vidal Vidali Crystal Potion, I think that's how you say that, but it gives you water bre breathing for three minutes. And you can see here, the, um, the purple shard and the black shard don't actually make potions. They kind of have the same effect glowstone and redstone do, so the black one will generally um, enhance the time the potion is, the time the effect runs, and then the purple one generally has an effect up so I'm just going to take some of these out let's put the purple one in you can see it go in here 
so you can see this should give us uh, the purple one is effect up so a water breathing too I don't know that doesn't make sense you know what let I haven't done this with the water breathing potion but let's see what it does so it gave night vision so I think the if you had a normal uh, brewing stand and you put the glowstone it's glowstone right yeah if you put the glowstone in, I think that'd turn it into a night vision potion maybe maybe not I don't know but you kind of get the base idea and this one should instead of water breathing three minutes it w I think it would, uh, what is it I forget exactly what it does but I think if, if it's three minutes I believe it might make it eight so when that's done it should be water breathing eight for eight minutes I think well, let's find out I'm correct well no it's night vision eight minutes apparently but okay so they don't exactly do that but they do things I guess night vision is more useful than water breathing but yep so that's the crystal brewery incredibly useful I have all the potions here um, so you can kind of guess so red one is resistance green is what it should be giving me you know what? never mind that um the green one is poison uh brown gives you the brown crystal shards are actually kind of useful because this potion will restore your hunger because it gives you saturation so that's a useful potion effect right there because instead of bringing a bunch of food you can just bring your potion drink it and now you have full um food bar Okay, so I don't know how long this recording has been going. Uh, let's see, um, 15 minutes. So this one's not going to be like the almost 40 minutes the other one was. I don't know why the other one took 40 minutes. I think most of the time was taken up by me explaining the um, the lumen turret and the uh, runes. Um, but yeah, so next thing. So this is the lumen wire. Um, to put it simply, it's a trip wire, but it's all fancy looking. Then, oh, I forgot I should have. Um, here, I'll show the thing for the crystal brew release so everyone loves making potions. Okay, no, between collecting a hideous red weed that seems to grow so slowly you could mine a chunk before it grew, to fiddling with arcane I something procedures that seem designed as a last resort replacement for something even worse. They're burning through valuable ingredients for effects that last mere minutes at the expense of a boosted effect too. So nobody sane enjoys this process at the very least, so maybe you could forgo most. You can read this if you pause the video, but yeah, so you can see pretty much it says you can make potions of the energy of crystal shards instead of making them and then making the process actually worth your time. So then it feels, yeah, so boosted, sh so standard shards um, yield level one, three minute potions and boosted shards le le yield level two potions. Um, you don't know how to make boosted shards yet, but here they are. They're the flashy ones. These ones are boosted. Um, so I'm just going to kind of give a little hint. It has something to do with the liquid chroma. Um, but you, again, you don't have, that's a bit more complicated and you don't have the proper am um, with a, this full with this top full row and some of this bottom row the most important one in this bottom row is probably this one um, and this one uh, this one um, this one and this one are really important so is this one uh, you know what they're all important all the achievements are important not the achievements progression all the progression is important try to get as much progression as you can and but generally I don't think any of the ones I have filled out in the bottom row gave me any shards so not shards fragments so unlocking this full row at the top g will give you 45 pages um, 45 info fragments you will have access to and then these are all of them so all the kind of basic things such as like the glows and defensive glass and stuff like that I've just been talking so I should talk more about the lumen wire so it's crafted you get two of them and it's crafted using uh, three cobblestone two obsidian, one glowstone dust, and one blue crystal shard. Um, must be a blue crystal shard, cannot be anything else. So you must use the blue one for that and you get two of them. And what you do is take, you use them like a tripwire, except you don't need string. Place two blocks, they can be incredibly far apart. And as long as they're facing each other, 
scratch that. They have max range. I just don't know what it is. So you can see you place them together and you have that effect. So I'm just going to try and figure out the max range. So it seems they can be placed a max of a um, one, two, three, four, five, five blocks apart. Or if you want to say they can be, I guess, eight blocks apart. But f the walls have to be at least, the pl blocks you place them on must be at least eight blocks apart. But you can see it. you got this nice little blue flashing line between, not really flickering, flashing like this blue, blue particle effect line. When you step in it, it makes a clicking sound. And it makes a d different particle effect. And yeah, that's all it does. I th I think I heard somewhere that you can put lenses or things in them, but when I when we get to that, I will show it off. And so they work exactly like a tripwire, except they're very visible. So not good for make they're not very good for making a um traps or anything. Cause someone actually they might do the opposite. Someone comes on, sees a nice shiny line, it's like ooh shiny, and then they step right into it. But you can see here, it emits a redstone signal, just like a normal tripwire would, except. They only, they only sense people. So you can see, not items, um, not hostile mobs or friendly. So you can see, not the sheep, doesn't sense the sheep or this creeper. Uh, gravel gun, please. There we go. But, so that's the lumen wire. Um, can, can be useful in its own ways if you want have something to activate or you want to have like a shiny beam somewhere that's what you can use this for I wonder does it pass through glass blocks that's something I should have thought of before it does so no it doesn't so must be open space um, okay so you can see some more potions here um, but so this is the last block I'm going to cover this is the particle spawner so in chromatic craft there's lots of cool particle effects and Instead of having to somehow place the block that makes the particle effects around um, this special block, you can make out any single particle effect that the mod offers. So you want that particle effect, you can do that. You want the pylon sparkles, you can also do that. Oh, I just opened the, click the Windows key. But how to make the particle spawner, first I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's just kind of this glowing cube. And you right click it, it's got all these things. Um, it's got all sorts of tabs. I'll show you what most of those do. You can figure some of them out on your own, but I'll show you what the majority of them do. Um, and you can see here, this is how you craft it. So it's two of any type, I believe. Let me just check that. Yep, so it's two of any type of crystal shard, and then four glowstone dust and a block of redstone. Then of that only requires a level one casting table, and you can see it here. Um, so some of these, so this is kind of the position so you can see the x position y position and z position so this is um x so if you know minecraft you're generally probably from you're probably familiar with x y and z positions but x is something z and x are kind of your one of them is forward backwards one of them is left right um and then y is up and down then this variance here pretty much sets the variance so pretty much randomizes it so you can set this up and you can see here it's randomly spawning within that area and then you can set it back down again then but if you increase the x position so you can see it's kind of there so x is this way y is this way and then z is up and down um, so that's actually really useful so you can set some variance up there so you can see now it's spawning all kind of around inside of that then this is the velocity so you can choose what kind of direction they go so I can set up on the X for velocity and you can see they generally kind of go in this direction but again you can set variance up for that so it'll kind of randomize what the what did I just do? Did I just do it bad? Oh, there we go. So I accidentally showed 
bit wrong. But you can see now that I turned it on, you can see they're going in that way. And of course, you can set, if you want, you, they can go up. That's not up, that's the... Darn it, I did it again. It always spawns on this top tab. Um, so just make sure you're on the tab you want. So if I wanted some like, if I wanted to go up a little bit, you can see there, we're kind of going up and then so on and so forth. Um, set, I'm gonna set it all back to zero. Then you can set variance up for this as well. So now it's going in every direction, just kind of flying out from the middle. Now you can choose the color. So it can be black, uh, red, blue, any color. And you can also choose your own color with RGB or whatever this is, hue, saturation, something. But you can also turn on cycling color and they go RGB on you. They all kind of, they flash different colors. Um, then down here you can choose what kind of particle it is. So you can choose like this. You'll have the red things back down here. Um, there's all sorts of cool ones. I'm just gonna turn off this. Unfortunately, the menu goes farther down than I can see. So, yeah. Um, too bad you can't scroll, but like you can make squares, uh, whatever this is. So all sorts of particle effects. Let's just set it back to like whatever it was before glowing sparkles so you can see there's all sorts of particle effects for you to play around with um, like this little sparkle here um, if you want so down here you can choose lifetime so right now the lifetime's 20 so you can see they disappear after a while um, but if you don't want that then you can turn the lifetime up And you can see now they last longer. Um, I don't know what this is. What is this? Okay, so this one, they kind of fade out of existence instead of just disappearing, I think. Then you can see this is the rate of, so you can increase the rate that they come out. Actually, wrong. Um, the higher the rate is, the slower they come out so you can take this down to like this and you can see there so this is the highest you can make them come out let's change it to night you got all sorts of rainbow sparklies coming out of there let's go make it kind of darker still light apparently that's not moody um yeah so you can see that's the particle spawner. There's also there's still more though. So you you, you can set gravity. Oh, no, I did it again. You can give it some gravity. So that they're now affected by gravity. I need a torch. Let's put the torches back. So you can see now the the particles are affected by gravity. I'm gonna turn it to peaceful. Um, but you can see so they fall down, but if you don't want that then you can turn that off And now they go in whatever direction um, But there's still more uh, So you can set the variance for gravity so every one will be Kind of randomly affected by gravity so you can see some of them are some of them are You can turn that up yeah, you can see some of them fly straight up, and then some of them fall down. Okay, uh, back here. So let's just turn that off. And negative gravity means they'll fly, well, up. Okay. And then you can choose the size. So if you want big sparklies, then spam this button. And now they're really <laughs> large. But 
if you don't want them really large, then of course make them smaller. Um, you have to click on the button. That's as small as you can make them, so now you've got really tiny sparkles. I actually, that's kind of nice. I kind of like that. Let's make it a tiny bit bigger. There we go. All the sparkles. Um, but there's still more to cover. How much, how long have we been? Oh, 28 minutes. Okay, it's at least the video is not a half an hour. Um, but you can set the uh, variance for the size. So you can see they're now all different sizes to an extent. So you can see they're all, some of them are super tiny, some of them are bigger. This thing really does have a lot of options. Um, then there's collision. So you can, if you turn that on, uh, they will collide with you. Actually, that's not what that means. That means they will hit when they have hit a block. So um, here, so you can see, they're just kind of going straight through these blocks. But if you, so you can see, you can kind of contain them here. You can't really contain them. So you can see they're all kind of just they go straight through. Um, you can turn the life up. So you can see they, they fly right through the blocks, but if you turn collision on, they now hit the block. Now they only fly out of this hole. But so that's the collision. And then and using the X and Y and using this the X using the positions here, you can actually have this thing hidden away and then like, let's say you have it. So let's say you have like some, you have like a wall here and you want the particles to come out over here, then X position. Um, I put it, is it going in the right direction? So every one is one block. Yeah, so you can see we're now coming out of this one block here. But let's move it over to the second one. Oh, too far. There you go. So now you can see the particles are just kind of coming over here. So you don't actually have to have them coming out of the particle spawner. They can just be coming out of where, from wherever you want. So you can kind of integrate the, these particles with whatever you want. You can add particles to anything. Um, there's still some other things. So fast expand, I don't know what this is. I don't know what those that does. There's a couple of these I don't really know. No slowdown. I don't know what that is either. Or do they just always just fly off at a speed? Oh, the, it, I think it means they don't slow down over time. But yeah, so I think you kind of get it. Um, you can do all sorts of particles like this one. Now they're actually little dots. Um, but I think you get it. You can do things. Yep, so that's the particle spawner. Um, not really, it doesn't really have any purpose other than making things look nice. Yeah. I, I was just thinking about ways I could use this, but never mind that. So I'm going to end the episode here. It's almost had probably over half an hour now so um yep so like the video if you liked the video and you thought it was informative and if you want to see other mod tutorials like this then subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching hopefully you watch this video all the way to the end and hopefully you watch the next one